This is going to be a really hard review for me to make. Hey guys, the Black Critic Guy, back with a brand new movie review. And today I'll be reviewing the ninth film from my favorite director of all time, Quentin Tarantino, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. So Once Upon a Time in Hollywood follows an aging TV star, his stunt double slash best friend, and a rising starlet as they all strive to make it big in Hollywood. But unbeknownst to them, in the shadows lies a dark threat. Charlie Manson and his cult. I'm sure many of you are well aware that I am a huge Quentin Tarantino fan. I believe he's one of the best directors working in Hollywood today and he's my personal favorite director of all time. His film, Pulp Fiction, showed me that film can be more than just mindless entertainment. It can be art. And I've loved his films ever since. So going into Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, I got really excited. I mean, it's him doing what he always does. He's reuniting with Leonardo DiCaprio, Brad Pitt after 10 years. Because think of it, in 2009, he did Inglourious Bastards, and now 10 years later, he re-teams up with Brad Pitt and does Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. That's, that's pretty clever. I, did you do that on purpose, Quentin? Did you do that on purpose? You know, I just realized, too, it's 2019 right now. Did he purposely push this film to be released in 2019 to correlate with the fact that it's his ninth film? You son of a bitch. <laughs> Banter aside, I was looking forward to seeing Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and I finally got the chance to last night. And what did I think about the film? Um, I gotta be honest with you guys. I'm quite torn on my feelings for this film. I don't hate it, but I don't love it either. It's probably the most polarizing film Quentin Tarantino has ever made in my eyes. And not for the reasons that everyone else finds it polarizing. I find it polarizing because it's such a departure from his style, yet also embodies a lot of his style. And I get it. It's kind of a contradiction there, but that's what this film felt like to me. It's just a huge contradiction. In fact, if I may speak bluntly... It almost felt like this whole film was either a huge subversion for Quentin Tarantino fans or it was a troll job done by Quentin Tarantino. And I'm not quite sure which one it is. But before we get to that, let's discuss some of the good elements of the film. I felt like its strongest element was the acting. Everybody gave great performances in the film. Even the girl who was in Death Note did a pretty good job playing a hippie. I, I actually liked her performance a lot. Leonardo DiCaprio kills it as always, still yelling his lungs out though, and Brad Pitt, he was a fascinating character. He kind of felt very stoic and distant, but his relationship with Rick Dalton was solid. I, I did feel like they were buddies, especially in the scene where they're watching his TV show or watching a show that featured him. That felt very genuine, and I've done that with my friends, so it was a very relatable scene, nonetheless. As for Margot Robbie, while I do find her to be a fantastic and talented actress, I found her performance in the film to be just serviceable. Now, that's not me saying that she gave a bad or weak performance. Rather, it's me trying to say that the story, or rather I should say the film, did not give her many opportunities to shine. They did not give her many opportunities to stand out and deliver an amazing performance. And I blame Quentin Tarantino more for that than I do Margot Robbie. She just did what she had to do. Honestly though, the best performance in the film, hands down, has to go to the guy that played Bruce Lee. He did such a spot-on, impressive impersonation of Bruce Lee. I bought that he was Bruce Lee. And although he only has one major scene in the film and makes two other small appearances later on, he made it count. And speaking about that scene, not only was it vintage Tarantino, in fact, I could argue that it was the most Tarantino scene in the entire film, minus the climax, 
but it was also very well shot. I like that most of that scene was done in one take. It was quite impressive. In fact, the cinematography all around was very good, minus a few repetitive shots here and there, especially when Tarantino would resort to using the backseat view shot. He used it like 8 or 10 times throughout the film and I was always wondering why do you keep resorting to that same shot? Aesthetically speaking it does look cool but using it over and over and over again kind of makes it lose its luster. I don't know whether or not that was a reference to something or an homage to a type of shot that was done prevalently in the late 60s early 70s. All I do know is that I found it very annoying. There were some really, really great scenes sprinkled throughout this film. I've already mentioned the amazing Bruce Lee scene, but another great one is where Rick Dalton is interacting with this little girl and they form a really strong bond in such a short amount of time. The acting in this scene was fantastic. From Leonardo DiCaprio to even the little girl, she was able to hold her own with Leonardo DiCaprio. That is so impressive. That whole scene was just a culmination of great acting, great writing, and great direction. Another fantastic scene is when Rick's body double Cliff goes to a ranch where all of Charlie Manson's cult members are. This scene, or I should say the entire time that Cliff is in this ranch, the tension is so culpable being very reminiscent to a lot of scenes from Inglorious Bastards to a certain degree. I loved its execution, I loved the atmosphere, I loved the acting, and I liked the way that this whole moment concludes. It was very well done. And honestly, that's all the good qualities I found in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. The rest of it? I think the best word to describe Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is meandering, as it's a long-winded film that stretches on and on and on and on and on and on and on with no real purpose or direction. Where is this story going? What are we building up to? What is the main plot of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? When I left the film, the first thing I said to my friend Taka is that this film reminds me so much of the 2015 film Inherent Vice, another film that I would describe as meandering, stretching on and on and on with no real purpose and not really leading to anything. And for a guy known for his amazing writing, crafting some of the most intriguing and engaging dialogue, fun and interesting characters, and some of the most memorable and intense moments, I for one was extremely disappointed with Tarantino's writing here. It's by far one of his weakest scripts to date, almost at the same level as Death Proof script, not living up to the standard that he himself made. He just dropped the ball in so many areas that he used to excel at, particularly the dialogue and the characters. Now, were there some good dialogue scenes? Yes, but they were quite sporadic. There aren't as many memorable dialogue scenes in this film when compared to his past eight films, including Death Proof. There is a very interesting bar dialogue at the beginning of Death Proof that I still remember and was actually well written. We are in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, outside of the monologue that Bruce Lee gives in the film, there aren't many memorable dialogue exchanges. There aren't many quotable moments in this film. And to say that the dialogue in a Quentin Tarantino film was not good or memorable, that's a huge shocking revelation. And finally, where I felt he dropped the ball the most was with his characters. Not only are most characters in a Quentin Tarantino film memorable, entertaining, and to a certain degree likable, but in every single Quentin Tarantino film I've seen thus far, every character serves a purpose to the story. I can't name a single character in a Quentin Tarantino film that was superfluous to the overall story. 
until now. Because one of the main characters, Sharon Tate, is completely superfluous to the story. If you were to remove her from the story, not even mention Sharon Tate, show Sharon Tate, nothing changes. And what I mean by nothing changes, yes, you can still have Rick Dalton acknowledge the fact that Sharon Tate lives near him, and maybe even she could show up at the end of the film as a way to accept Rick Dalton into the Hollywood elite, but outside of that, she serves no purpose. She serves nothing to the overall story. Do you know how disappointing it is to say that a character in a Quentin Tarantino film was superfluous. Especially a main character. I'm not talking about like a side character. One of your main characters is pointless in your story. I couldn't believe it. But that's exactly what Sharon Tate is in this film. What does she do in the film that was necessary to tell the story of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood outside of what happens at the end. Nothing. All she ever does in the film is spend time with her husband, Roman Polanski, cheat on her husband with a guy named Jay, get pregnant, and go to the movies to watch one of the films that she's been in to see the audience interaction. That's it. But what do any of those scenes really add to the film? Outside of maybe eye candy and a reference to the 60s and 70s, what does it add to this film right now? What does it bring to the table that was so necessary to tell this story? Nothing. And her involvement becomes even more superfluous once you see the ending of the film. And this is what I meant by it felt like he was trolling us. And my final issue with the film lies in its editing, which I found jarring and peculiar. There were so many strange editing choices made in the film that made me and my friend Taka scratch our heads like, what was the reason for that cut? Was it a joke? Was it supposed to be like a gag? Is it supposed to be a reference to how editing was back in the 60s and 70s? I don't understand the purpose of some of these edits. There was this one scene where Leo's character is talking to Timothy Dalton's character and it would juxtaposition from them talking to a shot of an old film that starred Steve McQueen. Now I get that their conversation is about that film, but why did it have to constantly go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth? I think one cut to the film and then coming back to the conversation would have been good enough. It felt more like a stylistic choice that didn't resonate with me. Not to mention that there's so many flashbacks in the film. In fact, there was one flashback that included a flashback. <laughs> Make heads on that. That was that was strange. So overall, guys, I'm still very torn about how I feel about this film. I honestly feel as though I need to watch it again. Maybe I might appreciate it a little bit more after repeat viewings, but as it stands right now, at this very moment, I feel as though the film is a mixed bag. Yes, there are some really great qualities in the film. There's some really solid scenes, but at its core, it suffers from a lot of major problems, especially in the writing, which is so bizarre considering it was written by Quentin Tarantino, one of the best screenwriters working today. For him to shoot out such a mediocre script is just baffling to me. I mean, sure, the day would have came that he would start to wane in his quality. I just didn't think it would be so soon. I didn't think it would be now. I hope that this is just an anomaly and this won't happen again, but I'm not too sure. All I am sure is that I found the film to be, eh, it's okay. But, as always, I'm not the end-all be-all opinion when it comes to Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I would love to know what you guys thought about the film. Did you love it to death? Is it one of your favorite Quentin Tarantino films? Do you think that it was well-executed, a very excellently made film? 
Or are you like me and are incredibly torn on how to feel about the film? Do you feel like it was mediocre? Do you think it was a letdown, that it was lackluster? Let your thoughts be known in the comments section below. But I do plan on making another video talking about what I mentioned at the beginning of this video, about this feeling more like a subversion or Tarantino trolling the audience, as well as delving in to the infamous climax and my thoughts on it and why I don't think it's as divisive as people are making it out to be. But until those videos come, guys, if you'd like to see more videos on this beautiful channel and be part of the Black Critic Group, please hit that subscribe button below. Like this video if you really enjoyed it. Join my Discord! Please join my Discord! As always, I'm Tony Y the Second, still a diehard Quinn Tarantino fan as the Black Critic guy. Till then, peace YouTube. Yeah.